good. Let's get that in focus. Oh, good morning. It's a cold, chilly start. And today I want to talk to all of you guys about woodwork on a boat. And speaking of work, that's actually where I am now. So I need to squeeze this in quickly before the boss realizes I'm gone and gets the hump. So today I want to talk to you about the woodwork on a boat, that beautiful warming glow, that quintessential boat feel and the perpetual chore that it is to keep on top of it. And Kadoa's companion way is no exception. She's had an incredibly tough life and I'm going to make it my mission to see if I can breathe some life back into her and restore her back to her former glory, or at least something close to it. Let's see if we can do this. But for you guys, it's back to Godoa. Pour the liquid into a pot, brush it on liberally, leave for 15 to 30 minutes, allow the stripper to penetrate and then remove. And you may have to repeat this step two to four times to get all the varnish off. So let's see how we go. I've applied a fairly liberal coating everywhere and I need to leave it now for, I'm gonna say about half an hour, just really give it a good chance to soak in. And there's already areas starting to appear that are sort of bubbling up and reacting to the stripper already. And then there's patches of areas where it doesn't seem to have done anything at all. And it's really interesting just to note the, the steps, for example, the, the varnish seems to be peeling back quite quickly and the washboard, not so much. So I wonder if maybe that's because it's reacting with a different varnish maybe that's been layered up over the years. So anyone who knows anything about this kind of varnish stripper and what it works best with and perhaps what it doesn't do so well against, and again, jump in the comments, let us know. I'm keen to learn. I don't really know a massive amount about the kind of chemistry in, uh, in what's going on here. So enlighten me, if you will. Scraping in the direction of the grain so as not to leave any, hopefully, not to leave any unsightly scratches on the finished product. And interestingly, even though this area didn't look like it was reacting particularly well, the varnish is coming off without too, too much of a problem, so. All right, let's get cracking. It's a super thin veneer, so I need to really make sure I keep a very even uh, spread on the pressure on the scraper. If I push in one side or the other, it's gonna be super easy to irreparably scratch uh, and go straight through the veneer. So just need to be careful, nice and light and continuous pressure is what I'm going for at the moment. And so far, no gouges. I'm switching over to the metal scotch pad. Is that the right term? And then I'm just gonna try and Get the rest of the little bits out. It's now day two of the sanding and revarnishing of the companion weight, and we've have some we have some mixed results. You see, we've had you know, some parts of taken some of the varnish off and, and other areas haven't. I've gone over this now with the varnish stripper twice and it doesn't really seem to be getting a great deal more off. So one of the things that I'm always a bit apprehensive about is going a bit too gung-ho with any sanding because the vast majority of this woodwork is actually a teak veneer. So it doesn't take much to go through the veneer and into the plywood underneath. Here you end up with little spots like this 
where the sanding has pushed us a little bit too far. So we're trying to avoid that. However, the steps, it would seem, are not teak veneered, so they look like they've had a pretty tough life too. So because of that, I think rather than just keep trying to sand this off um, gently by hand and stripping it off with the varnish stripper, I think we're just gonna we're gonna get the we're gonna get the mouse sander out and put some 40 grit paper on and just really push into this because it can take it. One black and decker mouse sander and a whole bunch of we're gonna start off with 40 grit. We're gonna go we're gonna go hard. <laughs> Starting to look a little bit better. Come check it out. I think we managed to bash most of the varnish off. It's probably time for a well earned hoover before getting this ready for its first coat of varnish. When you live on a boat full time, it really is hard to find space sometimes to get everything done. But we're getting there. One of the problems I've been having with regards to the varnishing is the fact that the temperature absolutely plummeted ever since I started this job. So to varnish these outside, basically the ambient temperatures have been too low to, to do the varnish. You really run the risk of it like not setting properly and discoloring. And it looks like we're set to have another really cold pinch coming in, and so time's just ticking by. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish these off, give them a wipe down, we're gonna go into the boat. I, mean, I think the plan of action is gonna to be to take all this down inside Kadoa, where we can control the temperature, warm it up a little bit, and get started on the varnishing inside the boat. This is where the good old diesel heater comes into its own. Nice, easy, even distribution of warmth. Jack that right up. I'm just giving the washboard a wipe down now with some spirits just to get rid of all the sawdust and, and bits of grime and grit and rubbish off of it to give us a nice clean surface to go ahead and get varnishing on. A little bit precarious. That might be why, so don't try this at home, kids. Right, now we've gotten all of the varnish off of the wood. This varnish is actually, it's a little old. So I'm gonna put a decent amount of thinners with it. I'm probably gonna thin it like maybe 50%. And what I hope to do is actually make it thin enough so it really sort of embeds itself in the grain of the wood um, rather than just sitting on top. So I want it to sort of soak in. Uh, and this is knowledge all garnered from watching YouTube videos. So if any more experienced wood workers out there think there's a more optimal way to get a better finish here, then jump in the comments. Let's be social, that's what this is all about. Um, that's really where we get so much of the value from these videos. Although, I imagine by the time you've watched this, I've already varnished it. So you may save somebody else the bother of going about it the way we're doing it. But I'm basically gonna start off with a really thin mix and then just gradually, gradually, gradually get thicker. And I think we're gonna put about eight coats of varnish eventually on, so. Let's get the first one underway. Okay, I just grabbed myself a new brush. Two and a half inch, Ron Seal, precision finish. No idea if that's a particularly great brush for varnishing or not, but it did say on the front that it's good for varnishing, so I'm gonna take them at the word. So in the same way that I was varnishing in the direction that the grain runs, I'm also applying the varnish in exactly the same fashion. So hopefully there'll be less brush marks in the same way that I'm varnishing, in the same way that sanding should hopefully leave less visible scratch marks. All right, there's the first coat. Already starting to look a million times better.
So this has had a little bit of a tougher life and you can see some water damage here and some battle scars on the bottom and there's some damage to the veneer. So basically we're just going to do the best we can to just instill a little bit of life back into her. I mean Kadoa is a 40 year old boat and like like any middling aged woman who's had a life she's going to carry she's going to carry a few battle scars here and there but she's still going to look good when she's done. Pretty confident about that. It's day two of the varnishing. That first coat is all dry. It's dark outside. It's just about six o'clock. It's about six o'clock when I get up in the morning, take Hank for a walk. And uh, let's see, I've just gotten about six o'clock. So it's dark when I get up, dark when I get back. But uh, we've got some light so we can see what we're doing. And uh, that's just winter time. Winter time's busy. It's full time work, putting money back in the bank and uh, fixing all the things I need fixing on the boat, doing some filming, show you guys what it's like behind the scenes and some editing and somewhere in all that, we managed to squeeze a little bit of sleep in too, but. So allegedly you don't need to sand down in between each coat of varnish as long as you apply each coat within a 72 hour window. So it's been 24 hours, we're gonna apply a coat every night and it's indoors in a controlled environment. So uh, yeah, hopefully that won't be a problem. And then we'll uh, yeah, see how, how she looks. Something feels a little bit wrong about the no sanding in between coats, but I'm definitely up for there being less work. So let's see how it goes. I have just thickened this up a tiny bit because it was super watered down yesterday. Right, considering there was no sanding in between coats, I don't think that looks too bad at all, you know. Okay, that's about all we've got time for this week. The companion way is looking a million times better already and there are still several coats of varnish left to go on. I'll be sure to take all you guys back there and show you as soon as it's done. Hopefully, we've been teased on the weather reports that we might be getting this cold, frosty weather starting to ease and something resembling springtime may be heading our way, which means we can get the roof finished on Kadoa, we can get our main sheet reattached and we can finally get out exploring some of these amazing winter anchorages and testing our new systems out, ready for our Project 365 and also documenting even more anchorages, which you guys can check out in a new section that we're building on our website, the Kadoa Great British Anchorage. Anchorages. I mean, they're not our anchorage, obviously, they're, they're anyone's anchorages. They're your anchorages if you want to go check them out. But we're sharing all of our experiences in these places with you. I'll pop a link in the description. Go check it out. Hopefully it might act as some inspiration for a new anchorage when you're out about on your uh, adventures. Although I need to get back to work, so I'm going to have to love you and leave you. Thanks for stopping by. Drop a comment, drop a like, hit subscribe, or don't. We'll see you next time.